Let's take a look at example number four, featuring rate of work problems. All right, so rate of work questions, people always tend to make them very, very, very complicated for no absolute reason. But I'm gonna show you guys a really cute, short, I said cute, not cute, but a really simple and short way that will work anytime you guys are given these types of questions, um, for sure. All right, so the question says, Alexis needed four hours to complete her exam and Shelly needed six hours to complete the same exam. If they were given the opportunity to work together, how long would it take them to complete the exam? So remember, anytime we're dealing with word problems, we always want to create what are called triggers, right? So how do I know I'm dealing with a rate of work question? So anytime people work together, that's going to be rate of work because one person is going to take a certain amount of time and another person is going to take a different amount of time. And the question is, well, if they did it together, how long would it take them? So... <clears throat> sometimes with these questions they'll directly give you a value sometimes you'll have more than those values so you got to make sure you're paying attention to what's going on so when we say rate of work the values are always going to be related to what time because work is measured based on what time so if we look at the values we have it says Alexis needed four for what four hours all right that's time based all right and it says Shelly needed six six what six hours all right, so that lets me know the different times that I am dealing with. So keep it super simple. What you're going to do is you're going to draw a fraction. All right, you're going to put a multiplication up sign up top, and you're going to put an addition sign at the bottom. All right, and then what you're going to do is you are going to go in and fill in these values. All right, so we're going to say 4 and 6 up top, 4 and 6 on the bottom. All right. And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and simplify. And it's literally going to be like this every single time. It's not going to change. All right. So if we say 4 times 6, that gives us 24. And 4 plus 6, that gives us 10. So we don't want to leave it in that form. You always want to go ahead and simplify it down. So if we do 24 <clears throat> divided by 10, that is going to give us 2.4. And then what are we measuring in? Hours. Right, and it's just that simple. I know people sometimes like these equations and all that stuff. I will use that. This is what I use, and I get the right answer every time. I actually learned how to do it this way when I was helping somebody, um, like with tutoring a long time ago, probably about 19 or 20. And when they would get these questions, I'm like, This is taking too long making these equations. So I noticed the pattern, all they was doing was multiplying up top, adding on the bottom, and you still got the same answer without all the variables and all that. So look at the question again from the top. It says Alexis needed four hours to complete her exam, and Shelly needed six hours to complete the same exam. So that's another trigger too. They're doing the same exact thing. If they were given the opportunity to work together, how long would it take them to complete the exam? So your trigger, of course, is what? Work together. All right, so once we know that we're trying to figure out how long it'll take when they work together. That lets me know I'm dealing with what a rate of work question. So I'm always looking at well, how long is it taking them to complete these things? Well, Alexis is four hours, Shelly is six hours, so we have four and six. So we draw a fraction, multiplication sign up top, addition sign on the bottom, fill in our values, and simplify, and we ended up with 2.4 hours.